Christopher Nolan has blessed us with some of the most daring visuals in cinema history. Coupled with pulse pounding scores that stick with you, Nolan has cemented his status as an all time great. His works have been subjected to endless debate. Here is the definitive list of his top 10 films. Coming in at number 10, The Dark Knight Rises. Despite being Nolan's highest grossing film and the seventh highest grossing film of all time at its release, The Dark Knight Rises misses on nearly every level. From Bane's ridiculous voice, It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. To Batman being left in the cave like he's a Bond villain. You expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. To Batman somehow rehabbing his broken back through push-ups and then making the jump out of the hole. To one of the worst endings of all time until the Game of Thrones took over that crown. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? On top of endless potholes that aren't even worth mentioning. The film had so much potential, but fell flat on its face. The only redeeming qualities were the opening scene with Bane hijacking the plane. Now's not the time for fear. That comes later. The incredible score with Hans Zimmer and the glory shots of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon. Otherwise, the film was a massive disappointment. Coming in at number nine is one of Nolan's lesser known films. Insomnia, a remake of the 1997 Norwegian film of the same name. Al Pacino stars as the flawed protagonist investigating a murder in Nightmute, Alaska. Detective Dormer, it's such an honor to meet you. I'm Detective Ellie Burr. Welcome to Nightmute. Pacino's character is struggling to sleep because of past trauma that is compounded by the eternal light in Alaska. Dormer, killing changes. Robin Williams, R.I.P., brings a powerful performance that adds to the complications of Pacino. Insomnia is well shot and features part of the world that is seldom filmed, but doesn't linger in your mind the way that Nolan's other films do. Well worth a watch, but this faces stiff competition on the rest of the list. While number eight is sure to cause some controversy, Interstellar deserves to come in this low on the list. Interstellar is a near-perfect visual film that wowed audiences with its exploration of space and time. The production team created scientifically accurate representations of space, and even got Neil deGrasse Tyson to praise the scientific accuracy of the film. Nolan partnered with Hans Zimmer for another perfect score. The sounds of Interstellar shake you to the core the entire runtime of the film. But for all the visual and auditory highs, Nolan wrote in about 30 minutes too much expository dialogue that removes the fun of thinking on your own and forces you to listen to clumsy dialogue like this. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. The sometimes confusing plot is propelled by Matthew McConaughey's love for his family, but it really only comes down to his love for his daughter, Merv. Merv. Come on, Merv. Make him stay, Merv. Don't let me leave, Merv! 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 And not his son, Tom, a young Timothy Chalamet. Tom will be all right, but you gotta make things right with Merv. I will. Interstellar is flawed, but come on, let's listen to the cornfield chase scene one more time. Interstellar remains to this day one of the best looking and sounding films you'll ever see. If Nolan would have trusted his audience a little bit more on this one, Interstellar would have been out of this world good. Before Marvel took over our universe, Christopher Nolan ignited the superhero revolution that we are living in today, redefining what was possible with the superhero origin story. Batman Begins gives us a cross-cutting first act that chronicles the rise of the most privileged boy in Gotham, rising from damaged child dealing with his parents' death to deeply flawed hero who clearly needs therapy. Batman Begins is grounded in realism and cool gadgetry. No makes survival suit for advanced infantry. Kevlar utility harness, gas-powered magnetic grapple gun. There's even a cameo by young King Joffrey. The third act is a cluttered mess and is largely Bruce Wayne's fault for being too lazy to show up to the job he was handed through his parents. Came for a job. Oh, I just want to get to know the company that my family built. All time tough look, but Batman begins walks so that Dark Knight could fly. Number six is the memory loss inducing memento. 
the film Nolan Fanboys will tell you is his best. Memento is our introduction to Nolan's signature time-bending storytelling. Guy Pierce stars as Leonard, a man suffering from short-term memory loss. Your condition. Your condition? I guess I've already told you about my condition. My condition? Because of my condition! Leonard is being taken advantage of by everyone he interacts with. The movie structure and plot has us questioning everything as we watch the film progress. That's basically the end of the movie. This stuff is the black and white stuff. And this is running backwards. What we do is we cut between the here, two. Scene there, scene there, scene there, scene there. You have flashbacks to a different timeline. With the black and white timeline moving forward and the colored version moving backwards, we begin to realize we can't trust anyone in this unreliable, narrator-driven story. In the wrong hands, this film would have been a gimmick, but no one strategically answers the puzzle of how everything fits together and leaves you wanting more. Kicking off the top half is The Prestige. Adapted from the 1995 novel of the same name, The Prestige follows two rival stage magicians obsessed with creating the best stage illusions possible. They engage in an increasingly bitter rivalry. Themes of obsession, secrecy, and sacrifice fuel the battle, as both magicians contribute to a deadly duel of one-upmanship. The film is structured like a magic trick, perhaps a metaphor for filmmaking itself. Only grossing 110 million, The Prestige is one of Nolan's least visually striking films, with a score that has been described as adequate. However, between a striking cameo by David Bowie as Nikola Tesla, Burns. Nothing is impossible. And an ending that still shocks, The Prestige is a Nolan classic. Winner of four Academy Awards and nominated for four more, Inception was the pop culture phenomenon of 2010, leaving everybody asking the same question. Did the top stop spinning? Inception dives five layers deep into the dream world. Nolan created intricate set pieces, including an iconic rotating hallway, to demonstrate the manipulation of time and physics within the Inception dream world. Likely Hans Zimmer's best score, the heavily electronic soundtrack transports you directly into the dreams of Leo, if only. Inception devolves into a shoot 'em up towards the end, dumbing down what was a fun, thought-provoking story. However, Inception pushes further ahead with original storytelling and expands what is possible in big budget action films. But seriously, is the top still spinning? Easily the hottest take on this list, Tenet and number three. The film that was tasked with saving movie theaters during COVID instead confused audiences and angered critics. Does the main character have a name? No. Does he have a backstory? No. Is there any semblance of character development? No. Did the actors themselves even understand what was going on? No. Sometimes the logic needed to catch up to what I believe he would feel in the moment, even if I can't all the way explain what it was. You know, it, it's not even a question of getting everything or even anything. Am I alive or dead? <laughs> even with all these flaws, Tenet is beyond a spectacle. The movie is just plain fun. This may not be Nolan at his best, but it is certainly Nolan at his most. Tenet is a beautiful film with a pulse-pounding score from Ludwig Göransson, and this line perfectly sums up what you should do on your first watch of Tenet. Don't try to understand it. Feel it. Critics had a field day slamming this film, but if you look past its minor flaws, the highs are higher and it's one hell of a ride. And that takes us into the top two. We're heading to the beaches of Dunkirk, a one-of-a-kind achievement that epitomizes the idea of showing, not telling. Dunkirk was nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Nolan's first for Best Director, winning for Best Sound Editing, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Film Editing for obvious reasons. A heart-pounding use of cross-cutting puts you right in the middle of a terrifying World War II battle. Dunkirk looks and sounds different than all other war films, receiving the highest praise from Quentin Tarantino. It was in watching Dunkirk a third time 
making my top 10 list that I think I had had it preliminary at seven and it jumped up to number two. To keep up with the theme of show, not tell, just go rewatch Dunkirk. Finally, Christopher Nolan's number one film, The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger, RIP, gave us a legendary performance and an iconic villain for the ages. The Dark Knight has unstoppable momentum from the opening bank robbery scene. To Batman flipping the truck. The Dark Knight is a comic book story with real life stakes, character development, and truly makes you question what is right and what is wrong. Easily the most rewatchable film on this list, The Dark Knight is a film for the ages. So there it is, your definitive top 10 list for Christopher Nolan's films. There's gonna be some hot takes in the comment section, but please. Let's not blow. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more content on the way.